everybody, Jared Duckett, Duckett Lad Dental CPAs and Advisors here with my colleague, Caleb Gustner. Caleb, how's it going, my friend? Doing well, sir. How are you? Good, 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 man. We got the afternoon blues, right? We're sitting here getting, uh, got to get psyched up for the afternoons, but nothing like psyched up than a, a video on EBITDA, right? Oh my goodness, gets my wheels turning. Let's do it, man. So what we want to do is just hop on. We're going to talk about EBITDA. Everybody talks about it. It's like one of those little fast words that just rolls off the tongue, right? EBITDA just kind of just pops out there. But let's just unpack two things, Caleb, if you can. And I'm getting with you, Caleb, you work a lot in our M&A department, you know, on acquisitions, distributions, you see EBITDA all the time, right? You hear this? Is it a word? You hear it every day, right? My, my favorite M&A buzzword, EBITDA, <laughs> especially in the, the dental industry. It, it seems like most dentists who don't know accounting, they at least know EBITDA. So they throw it around like, hey, I'm smart. I know what EBITDA is. So to give you guys some context on what EBITDA actually is, it is earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, amortization. What does that mean? Really, it's getting down to net earnings, adding back interest, okay, taxes and not residential taxes, no personal property taxes, federal and state income taxes, okay, depreciation and amortization, everyone's favorite uh, secondary buzzwords that most dentists like to act like they know what those mean, depreciation, amortization, they all have it. So earnings, adding all those items back, and we'll, we'll take a little deeper dive into it and why it's important here. Jerry, I'll throw it back to you. Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. And, and that's the first thing, like, what is it? And Caleb just unpacked it. And we're going to do a screen share here and get very tactical because I want you guys to be able to go out and calculate your own EBITDA because, yes, it is possible for you as the dental practice owner to go calculate your own EBITDA if you have good and accurate books and records. Right. So you can do this exercise right when you watch this video. Go back to your books, do this, and you can calculate your own EBITDA to a degree. Um, but more importantly, we want to talk about after you figure out what it is, why it matters. You know, and we're going to talk a little bit, Caleb is working in the M&A department, like the difference between a doctor to doctor transaction and what to look at, the difference between selling to a third party, you know, let's say a DSO and what that looks like and what or, or why EBITDA really matters in that respect. So let's do this, Caleb, if you got some time and we're not going to take a ton of time for you guys. I know we can only hold your interest on EBITDA for maybe seven to 10 minutes, give or take. So these are just sample financial statements we kind of put together really summarized right you can just see we're not going into the detail here which i love i don't like the detail i want the summary to see what's going on but caleb just walk us through this aspect here of kind of what's going on and then once we do that then we can take it and kind of calculate ebitda and come up with a final scenario here so just jump in here if you don't mind yeah, no, absolutely, guys. So what we're looking at here is a high, high level, 30,000 foot view, overview of a uh, profit and loss statement for a sample dental practice. So let's say in this scenario, we've got a $1.325 million GP practice. All right. We have just summarized our P&L items. So team comp lab, dental supplies, all these items that should be on your P&L right now. So you should be able to uh, close out this current month, add all this up for the month see where you're at to get down to a total overhead number. So that total overhead number is going to be um, your, your sum of all of your uh, production expenses or expenses related to what it takes to run this, to run your dental practice. All right. So in this scenario, we're going to say we have a GP practice 1.325 uh, running about 55% overhead. That's getting it done. Right. So this, this practice is, is churning and burning. Um, so this is what we want to see at the end of each month. Yeah. What, this, what this gets us down to is that net operating profit. And uh, Jared, I'll, I'll throw it back to you here before uh, we, we dive into EBITDA, before we, we hop into the doctor for doctor versus DSO sale. Yeah. So one thing here that I, I should have put on this spreadsheet, but I didn't, is what, what we call doctor expenses, right? So we track overhead in these six categories right here. Every single dollar of overhead goes into these six categories. There's a seventh that's not on here, and that's what we call doctor expenses, which is basically anything that is for the sole, let's say, benefit of the doctor. So maybe this is an S corporation and the doctor is getting paid a wage, which they should. That would be a doctor expense. Let's say they got malpractice insurance. Let's say they've got um, some auto expense and personal type. I say personal type expenses that are attributed to the doctor. Okay. Those are what's called normalized. Those are added back. 
and you're not going to see it on this calculation of net. Because like Caleb said, net is basically money in the door minus money out the door, not including anything attributed to the doctor. Does that make sense? So Caleb hit on this net number and where that's typically used in some sort of transition. Yeah, absolutely. So typically when we are looking at a doctor for doctor transition, so let's say you're, you're buying a practice from a doctor, so you're a doctor buying from another doctor or you're a doctor selling to another doctor. Typically in industry, what we see is we're trying to arrive at this net operating profit number. And I like to throw in their net operating profit because this is really the, the net profit coming from operations, right? So just as Jared has alluded to, there is no extra fluff that you typically see in an S-Corp entity on the, on the dental side. You're throwing your uh, personal cell phone expenses in there. Maybe you got some kids swimming lessons that sometimes show up. We've seen a lot of crazy things in our day that show up here. So really trying to give you guys a bare bones idea of what this practice is going to do. Say you come in and buy it or you're selling it to another doctor. Where we see this come in is on the open market in, in today's industry, typically we see this number multiplied by one and a half to two times net. So we're going to take this 586,000 bucks and we're going to multiply it by a multiplier of 1.5 to two. Okay. That's what you're going to get in a doctor for doctor transition. Which multiple do you use? Well, that's where intellectual capital comes in, making sure you have the right advisors around you, advising you on, hey, what multiple do you value this thing at? What multiple are you trying to achieve in the, the transition or transaction itself? So just keep in mind, sometimes you'll see one and a half, sometimes you'll see one, seven, five, sometimes you'll see two, just depends on the, the practice itself. Yeah, all practices are created differently, not created equal, right? So um, that's well said. So that's exactly where net operating profit comes into play. Okay. Now what I want to do, I'm going to take this and I've got some numbers here and we're going to take your net. Again, this is a solo GP practice, one doctor, okay, one doctor. We're going to take the net and we're going to convert it, or we're going to come up with EBITDA on this practice. Okay. So bear with me here. You've got your earnings. Let's think about EBITDA earnings before interest taxes, depreciation, amortization. Okay, a bunch of accounting buzzwords. We're going to add those back. Okay, so interest. I'm going to, let, let's say they've got some equipment financing in there, for instance. Okay, let's say they've got some debt on some equipment and there is interest being paid on those loans. Okay, in this instance, they paid $7,500 a year in interest. Okay, that $7,500 is already up here in these numbers under facility expense probably. You with me? Okay. So we're going to add that back. Taxes, the second aspect of it. As Caleb alluded to at the beginning, that does not include real estate taxes. That does not include personal property taxes. That specifically is income taxes. Okay. For the most part, in dental practices, they're going to be in flow through entities, maybe an S Corp, maybe a partnership, or maybe a, a Schedule C sole proprietor. There's not really going to be taxes being paid specifically out of that entity. They flow through. So in this example, it's zero. Not to say that they don't owe taxes. It's just to say there's no taxes up here already expensed in overhead. Okay. Next one, depreci depreciation. This client has $22,500 for the year of depreciation. Okay. We're adding it back. It's already included up here as an expense. You follow me? That could be they purchased equipment that year and took accelerated depreciation on or other fixed assets, capital items that they've depreciated. And let's just say amortization is 5,000. You might ask what in the world is amortization? I'm going to keep it simple, guy. I think it's another way to depreciate what they call intangible assets. So you might have some goodwill. Let's say when the doctor bought this practice, it, someone's allocated a goodwill and they're amortizing that a portion over time. Okay. So here we are adding back these four things to earnings. But this is the biggest thing I think people miss. And Caleb, you can give me some feedback is you have to take it one more step further. You have to take out, subtract from EBITDA, if you will, what this calculation is, a reasonable compensation for a doctor to perform the production of this practice. Okay, I hear all the time, if somebody was looking at this, they'd say, okay, Jared, 
we've got EBITDA of about 621,000. That couldn't be farther from the truth because EBITDA is earnings if you're an outside investor almost, okay? What you're gonna earn if a doctor's in there producing. So what you have to do is take it one more step further. And Caleb, I think, let me plug in some numbers here. This specific practice did about 352,000 of annual hygiene net production and 973 of doctor production. Okay, there you can see it's a 1.325 practice. And let's just say this is a perfect world and they're collecting exactly 100%, right? That's what this is doing. Caleb, walk through what this is doing now and how that reasonable compensation has come up with, if you don't mind. Yeah, so you guys have to remember, and, and we're going to dive into this a little bit deeper here, but this EBITDA factor that we're looking at here is typically what you're going to see, and Jared alluded to this earlier, in a third-party market transaction or you know, you're, you're selling to a DSO. Um, and as Jared had just alluded to, this is what you need to look at as if you're a passive in investor, right? So the DSO is not going to be performing clinical dentistry. They are investing in this practice, right? So they're going to have to come in and pay a doctor to perform the clinical work to get a return on their investment, right? So what they need to do or, or what you need to do is, is put yourself as if you're a DSO, you're an investor, you're gonna buy this practice. What do I need to reasonably compensate my doctor to see a return? So what we're doing here is we're taking the doctor's net adjusted production, we're gonna multiply it by a 30% uh, percentage. We, we, we typically find that this is uh, very industry standard, very reasonable um, in, a, in a DSO transaction. We see, we've seen multiple clients uh, sign on employment agreements at 30%. So we just keep it simple, keep it easy, round number 30%. So what we're doing is we're backing that 30% compensation off the EBITDA to allow us to calculate what this thing would be worth on the open market um, in an EBITDA sale, if that makes sense. Yep, no, that makes perfect sense. So now, now that we've taken out that reasonable salary, again, a ton of people miss this. Now that we've taken out the reasonable compensation for that doctor, this number now is true EBITDA on this practice. Okay. Again, we've taken out doctor expenses. We've normalized it. We've gotten rid of the fluff. I love that word, Kayla. We've gotten rid of the fluff and we've, we've kept the meat, right? We've kept the meat of this financial statement. This is the true EBITDA number. So Caleb, just talk briefly. We'll kind of wrap this up, but just talk briefly. What does EBITDA mean? And what are, what are the DSOs, third-party other buyers, if you will, what, is the, what does EBITDA mean and how, how that makes sense in a transition? Yeah, so most third-party buyers are going to come in, look at your EBITDA number, they're going to look at the percentage, and they're going to look, uh, they're going to do a deeper dive on how is my EBITDA attributing to, what, what, what is this thing, um, how shiny is my practice, right? So in this instance, 24, almost 25% EBITDA, this practice is getting it done, right? So on the open market right now, uh, we're seeing we're seeing a, a GP practice like this selling to a DSO anywhere from four to six and a half times multiple. I'd probably, you know, argue that this thing is probably worth five and a half, six times, um, maybe six and a half if you have the right buyer. So what you do on a DSO sale, so you're, you're a doctor selling, right? And this is why it's important to monitor this. You want to know, hey, if I if something were to happen or, hey, I want to sell my practice, what can I get for this thing? We're going to take our EBITDA number and let's just be conservative, Jared. Let's take that 330,000 bucks and multiply it by a 575 multiple. Say, hey, we're pretty confident we can get a 575 uh, multiple on, on our practice. In essence, we can sell this thing, quote unquote, for 1.895, right? So it's important to monitor this number, understand where it comes from, how to drive EBITDA in the event, because at some point, you know, Every dentist's career does come to an end, whether that's five years down the road, 10 years down the road, 15 years down the road, or two years down the road, always thinking ahead, having the, the end in mind, right, Jared? We talk about this all the time, having the end in mind from, from the very beginning, right? Knowing how to calculate EBITDA, and more importantly, knowing how to drive EBITDA, working with the right advisors, uh, making sure you're calculating this, monitoring this, and driving this number so that when you are ready for that exit plan, uh, to implement that exit plan, you know, you're, you know, exactly where you're at, what you can reasonably expect to get. 
Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. And, and, and I want to riff back off what you said earlier when you were talking about net, right? You said anywhere from one and a half, two times net on a doctor to doctor transition. Um, same thing when you're looking at EBITDA multiple, right? Like here, you use an example of a 5.75. Let's say it's in a more rural market. Let's say you got a higher um, Medicaid percentage. Different things are going to bring it down. Different things are going to bring it up. But that's just a range, like Caleb said, that we're kind of seeing you know, where things fall. Um, and I want to do one more thing. I, I geek out on these things. I get on here and I can't stop. Look at this example, right? We got a 329 EBITDA. Pretty healthy overhead in this practice, right? 55% is pretty good overhead, right? I'm going to change some numbers on the fly. Caleb, I don't know if this spreadsheet will work, but let's try it. And I'm going to increase overhead to show what you, to show what it does to the value of this practice. Okay. So instead of 352 on team comp, I'm going to put in 401. Now it's up to 30%. And this is typical. You, you see this a lot of times. Go calculate your own if you're watching this to see what your percentages are. Let's say lab goes up just a little bit. Um, all right, you with me? So we just went from 55% overhead to 63. Okay, these numbers stay the same. Collections is what it is, but your overhead was just increased. This number was 329, wasn't it, Caleb? Yeah, 330. Now it's, it went down $100,000, right? Because we increased this 100,000, give or take. There's rough math in there. Now, instead of a 20, I think it was 24% EBITDA, now it's a 17. Look at the value of that. You see what happened there? So that's why this is so, so important to, to first off, know your numbers and know your overhead, your net, your EBITDA. But even more important is the power of knowing the power of the 1%, the 2% to 3%. In this example, the power of the, I'm going to undo this, all right? The power of the, look, look at this number, the 1.4. As you chisel off some overhead, look what you can do to the value of your practice. And don't get me wrong, it's easier than clicking an undo button here. It's hard work, I get that. But that's the true power of the numbers and how all those numbers work, if that makes sense. So Caleb, anything else there? Anything else you wanna to add to this spreadsheet that you see? No, I think, I think this gives a very, very good, simple, but in-depth in overview of what EBITDA is, how you calculate it, why it's important, and know that it can be used, it cannot be used. Just understand the situation that you're in. Every deal is different, right? I've worked on a lot of dental deals. Every deal is different. Every situation is different. Every multiple is different. Make sure you're surrounding yourself with the right people. Don't do it alone, right? There's, there's people out there that can help you. There's resources that can help you. Um, don't be afraid to ask for help, guys. It's, it's, it's imperative that Stick to your specialty, right? We stick to our specialty. We're not trying to give legal advice. We're not trying to give marketing advice. Um, stick to your specialty. Don't be afraid to ask for help and make sure you know your numbers. Yeah, that's well said. So to do for you guys, if, if you want to, if you want homework, you don't have to do it if you don't want, but go calculate your net. Let me back up. Calculate your overhead percentage. Calculate your net. Calculate your EBITDA. You can do it. Go watch this video. You can do it. And then go look at the power of reducing overhead or increasing collections. It can happen both ways on what those do to create spread, which increases that value. So I hope that makes sense to you guys. Caleb, I appreciate you, buddy. Uh, if you guys out there have questions on this, message us, whatever. We're here to help. Um, love helping dentists get better. So Caleb, we'll see you, buddy. See you, Jared. Take care.